Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another Sunday meal prep video. I'm happy to be back in the kitchen prepping this weekend since I was gone away last weekend and wasn't able to prep. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Christy. I am currently following the WW Blue program, but I do provide the points for all three programs on my channel. And I also will link you to the recipe, so if you're not following WW, you can get any nutritional facts that you need there. And I hope that you'll consider subscribing to my channel. So on the menu plan this week, I was trying to wait until October to do some pumpkin recipes, but I didn't make it. So this week for breakfast prep, I'm doing my pumpkin pancake bake. It's kind of like a pumpkin spice pancake bake, I guess you could call it. And that is so good. I love this one. And then for lunch prep, I'm going to do chicken fried rice. Usually when you have chicken fried rice, like in a restaurant or something, it's a lot more higher in points and calories. So I'm going to be lowering that down today. And then I am going to be doing some dinner meal kits. I think I have three dinner meal kits that I'm going to be doing this week and then uh, cutting up some fruit for my snacks. So if you want to see how I meal prep breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks for my husband and I, then stay with me. Don't you know that you're things for any recipes that you see me making today or kits that I'm putting together if you go down into the description box you'll see any of the recipes or you might see if there's no recipe leak I might just have it typed out and also some of the items that you see me using I may li have linked down below as well like my scale and different things that I use my meal prep containers things like that so if there's something that you're looking for check in the description box I usually try to put a direct link but I also have an Amazon storefront that's amazon.com slash shop slash planning us healthy and you can usually find anything there but if I didn't link something just ask me um, don't go looking it up just ask me and I'll look it up for you and get you the direct link to it and also the other thing I'm going to ask is that if you like these meal prep videos please make sure to give this a thumbs up because it does let YouTube know that you like these type of videos and that in turn promotes my videos and that in turn will help me and I greatly appreciate it all right let's get started so the pumpkin pancake bake I'm going to be using Kodiak cakes. If you've watched me for any time, you know that I love Kodiak cakes. I use them pretty much for all my pancake bakes. This is the buttermilk kind. There are different kinds. There's like, I think, chocolate, peanut butter. So double check the points if you use anything different. The, for this recipe, I'm going to need two cups. And I've mentioned several times before um, that I weigh out two cups because usually with anything that's like powder consistency, like flour and things like that, if I were to put two cups in a measuring cup and then I weigh it, it's going to weigh a lot more. So I always try to weigh it out to make sure I'm not getting too many points. So for half a cup is 53 grams. And I'm going to need two cups. So that's going to be 106, so 212 grams that I'm going to need for two cups. All right, I've got 214. That's going to be fine. That's not going to make a difference in any points. And the next thing I'm going to need is one and a half cups of unsweetened almond milk. I've used the vanilla flavor before and that works fine. In fact, sometimes I prefer to use the, the vanilla, but with the pumpkin, I'm just going to use the red, regular. So that is one and a half. I'm also going to use about three tablespoons of Swerve brown sugar replacement. You can use Swerve or you can use, I can't remember the other kind, Lakanto. I do have some of that as well that I use sometimes. I don't really have a preference with which one I use. It just depends which one I have on hand. So I'm actually almost out of this one. Yeah, that's not quite a tablespoon there. We're also going to need one egg. The next thing I'm going to need is one cup of pumpkin. And this is the Libby's 100% Pure Pumpkin. I'm also going to use two teaspoons of vanilla extract, which all right, I must have already used my teaspoon, so I have to use my half of one. So there's half, 
one, one and a half, and two. And also some pumpkin pie spice. My recipe has one and a half teaspoons of this, but you can just use as much as you want as far as you're liking. Sometimes I've used two teaspoons, just depends on how much spice you like in it. I think today I'll do almost two. Finally, I'm gonna be using some Mrs. Butterworth sugar-free syrup. On my recipe, I have that I use Maple Grove Farms, but I haven't been able to find that lately, so I've been using this kind. And what I'll do is just portion these into little containers and put them in the meal prep containers. So now I'm gonna mix this all up. It's all mixed then I'm gonna take a 13 by 9 inch pan I've sprayed it with cooking spray and I'm just gonna just pour that whole mixture in there and then this is gonna go in the oven on 350 degrees for about 30 minutes and if you've made my other pancake bakes this one the consistency is a little bit different because of the pumpkin in it uh, but it's really good and also the points on this are four points for blue and purple and five points for green and that is uh, including the syrup because the amount of syrup that I use on in the containers is not enough to make it any more points. Now the other thing that you can do and I have done before is sprinkled it with some more of the swerve brown sugar that I use or you could sprinkle it with some more of the pumpkin pie spice. I think I'm gonna leave it like this for now and then when it's done, I am going to sprinkle some of this confectioner sugar. This is the Swerve confectioner sugar. I'm gonna just sprinkle some of that on for zero points. All right, so this is going in the oven now for 30 minutes, and then I'm gonna meet you at my stove to start on the lunch. All right, before I go over to my stove, I washed my blueberries, and I'm just gonna lay them out to kind of dry some while I'm making the lunch. So I'm just going to put them on these. These are really cool. These are called uh, unpaper towels. And my friend Anita over at Chit Chat Patty Whack had sent these to me. And yes, Anita, I have my water. I'm just going to let these dry. I'm actually going to serve these with the breakfast. I'm just going to put a little bit in a side container to have with those. So I'm going to let those sit and then start on the lunches. All right, so now we're moving on to lunch and I'm gonna be making chicken fried rice. This is going to be three points on blue and purple and five points on green. That is using one and a quarter pounds of chicken breast. So if you are on green and you use anything more than that, make sure you account for additional points. I'm actually using about a pound and a half in mine, but I'm on blue, so it's not gonna make a difference in points. So let me share with you what is in this. this you can do all different variations of chicken fried rice. Basically, you can throw in whatever you like in it. So what I do in mine is about one to two cups of mixed vegetables, and I just use frozen mixed vegetables. I use two cups of cooked brown rice, but if you prefer to use uh, cauliflower rice, that will definitely lower the points. My husband and I don't really care for cauliflower rice too much, so I, I prefer to take the points and use the regular rice. You could even do like half and half if you wanted also. That would cut down the points. I'm gonna use a shallot. I'm gonna use some red pepper and green pepper. I'm not gonna use all of it. I'll just put some of it. I'm gonna use three eggs. I'm also going to use just a little bit of sesame seed oil and some soy sauce. All right, so the first thing I'm doing is getting the chicken going. So I have this great big huge wok filled with some cooking spray i just used my misto and just kind of sprayed some olive oil spray in there and I heated up my pan and what i did is my chicken is already cut up i cut it into bite-sized pieces or just small pieces and i seasoned mine with smokehouse maple seasoning whoops the smoke smokehouse maple seasoning we use this when it's on the grill but i thought it would still be good in here too this is our favorite kind of seasoning right now so i'm just gonna dump that into the pan and i know you're probably loud right now 
I notice when I'm cooking something that's sizzling, it really picks up on my camera. So I'm just going to kind of spread that around in the wok. I'm just going to cook that until it's pretty much cooked through. And that way, when I put everything together, I don't risk the, the chicken not being cooked. So I'm just going to cook it through and then I'll set it on a plate while I cook the rest of the stuff. Kind of mix it up. Okay, so now I'm just going to cut up my vegetables. I have my produce washed. So now I'm just going to cut everything up. And if you don't have a shallot, you could definitely use an onion. That's perfectly fine. I actually prefer a little bit more onion flavor in mine. But that's the only thing with shallots. They're kind of small. But I think this will be fine. Okay, I think we've got enough there. So I'm gonna be using the rest of these peppers in a recipe later in the week. So I'm just gonna put them in this bag. These are reusable silicone bags that I get. And you'll see I use the uh, gallon size for my dinner kits also. And I'll make sure to link these down below. There's dinner size, there's snack bag, and sandwich size. So now I'm just gonna wait for my chicken to get done and then I'll show you what we do next. Okay, now once your chicken is done, which I have mine a little bit <laughs> done more than I care, I was trying to fix my camera stand and not paying attention to the chicken. So now I'm just going to take it out. Actually, you know what? It does look pretty good. I like it that way. I think what it is is the seasoning. So let me show you. That's what it looks like. So if you don't want yours cooked that much, I mean, just cook it to your liking, but obviously make sure the chicken is cooked all the way through. So I have my burner off for now. Now I'm gonna add all the vegetables. So I am gonna give this another mist with cooking spray. And I actually, missed those nuts. there we go. I think I need to refill it, but that's okay. Sometimes when it gets a stream like that, when it's low or it gets clogged. So that pan is really hot, so I'm gonna add my vegetables now. And now I'll get my burner turned back on. I'm gonna add all the vegetables. I'm gonna do two cups of the mixed vegetables. And then we're just going to let these saute until they're softened. So now that I've got those cold vegetables in there, I'm going to go ahead and kick my heat up to about six. All right, we'll let those sit and cook and then I'll come back to you. All right, everyone. So while I'm in the middle of lunch, my breakfast is done. So this looks really good. I just wanna make sure, okay. The next thing I'm gonna do is just take some of this confectioner sugar and I'm just gonna sprinkle that over the top. And again, this is zero points for this kind. Oh my gosh, my mouth is watering. All right, I'm gonna set that aside and let that cool while I finish the lunches. Okay, once that is cooked to your liking, which I like mine pretty sauteed, and I hope this isn't too loud. I did unplug my mic, but I know sometimes it still picks up when I'm sauteing things. So now I'm just gonna create a little well there. I'm gonna spray a little bit more olive oil spray. And now I'm just gonna crack three eggs in there. And they are gonna start cooking, so I need to crack them quick. And then just start 
scrambling those up. If you're on green and you want to leave the eggs out, you certainly can do that. Pepper. I don't add a whole lot of salt because I add soy sauce and there's quite a bit of salt in the soy sauce. Alright, once the eggs are cooked, just mix that all together. And I have my heat turned down now to about two. Now we're going to add our rice and chicken. One of those recipes that when I hear it, chicken fried rice, it just doesn't sound appealing to me. But once I make it, it just looks so good. Yeah, I think I definitely shouldn't have cooked that chicken that much because it's going to be reheated. So definitely watch your chicken. Like I said, if I wouldn't have been monkeying with my stand trying to get the camera just right, <laughs> I would have been paying more attention but it is still gonna be good. All right, now I'm actually gonna turn my burner off. Now I'm gonna add just a dash of sesame seed oil. This is high in point, so you don't wanna use too much. And then I'm gonna use three tablespoons of soy sauce. Also, the same thing with the rice. If you don't want to use rice, you can use the cauliflower rice and lower your points. So this is one of those things you can definitely make it your own. Okay, that is it. So now I have my burner turned off. I'm going to take this off the burner and I'm going to let it cool down before I put it in the meal prep containers. So now I'm going to go back to the table. I think the pancake bake is cooled enough that we can put that in the prep containers. Okay, so I have all my meal prep containers ready. I'm going to use these foil baking cups to put the blueberries in because we're gonna be heating these up so that way I can easily pull the blueberries out of there before I reheat everything. So I'm just gonna put some of the blueberries in there. All right, I was worried that wasn't gonna be very many blueberries for six portions, but it turned out pretty good. So now I'm going to just cut this into 12 and I want to show you because the inside is a little bit different than my normal cake, pancake bakes and you probably can't see that. Alright, I had to come around my table so you could see, oh, it doesn't want to focus, there you go. So you can see it's not, it's more moist than the regular pancake bakes uh, because of the pumpkin in there. So I'm going to go through and put two pieces in each container and then the other thing I'm going to do is weigh out my syrup. So I had to just double check. You can have 49 milliliters for zero points. So that's what I'm going to have on this. So it pretty much fills this container. I get these containers from the Dollar Tree. There you get like 10 of them for a dollar. And then those will just go right in there with the blueberries. So that will be one of our breakfasts. So I'm going to go through it and put the rest together. These 
are still pretty hot. So what I'm going to do is I want to make sure that I have the exact amount in each container. So I am going to weigh out the whole thing first and figure out what I can have. So I'm putting my bowl on here and I'm going to tear it out so that it's zero. But I will let you know something that I do. Something that I do in case I forget to do that is I write how much the bowl weighs on the bottom. So that way if I forget to zero it out before I put everything in, then I can subtract the amount of the bowl. But this time I'm going to remember to zero it out. And I'm going to dump everything in there. And it's coming out to 1275. So for six of them, that's going to be 200 and... 15 around 215 in each one so 1275 divided by 6 212.5 so i'm going to shoot for 212 in each container all right so we have that much in each container so these are kind of tall containers so i'm just going to go through it and weigh out the rest of them So now when you get to the end <laughs> and I realized that ones like this I ended up with hardly any chicken so I need to just try and even out some of the chicken I thought that first one seemed like it had a lot of chicken in it all right that's good good enough so that's it for those so now I'm gonna set these aside they're actually still pretty hot so I'm gonna set those aside wipe down my table and get started on the dinner kits okay so now we're moving on to the dinner kits and for those of you who've been following me for some time i'm about to sound like a broken record so if you're new to my channel basically what i do for my dinner kits is real similar to the meal delivery kits so for these ones i'm not cooking them like i did the breakfast and lunch i'm just portioning out all the ingredients and putting putting them into a meal kit and then that way when i have them i pull them out of my fridge i store these in the fridge not the freezer they're only in my fridge for up to three days. So one I will use tomorrow, then Tuesday, and then Wednesday. But what I usually do is my meat is frozen. So even the one for Wednesday is still fine. So the first one I'm going to put together is cream cheese and broccoli Hasselback chicken with broccoli and peppers. So what I usually do is write down what is on the bag and I write down the points for everything in the dinner. So this one is four points on blue, four points on purple, and eight points on green, and that's for everything that goes in, the sides included. So these bags are reusable silicone bags that I bought from Amazon. I'll link those down in the description box below. This is like what I used for that other bag that I had uh, that I put the peppers in. I use a regular permanent marker on these and then I just scrub real hard when I'm washing them. It does take a bit of scrubbing to get those off. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to do broccoli and peppers with this. So I think what I'm going to do is use these peppers that I had left over. I'll just put those down in the bag. Actually, let me put those in there first. And then I'm going to put my broccoli. Now this, I'm having broccoli on the side, but it also calls for broccoli that you cut up real small and put in with the cream cheese. So you mix those together. So I am going to probably use all of this because I'll be using some to mix with the cream cheese and then some to have as a side. I believe I have a cook with me out for this one. It's an old one that I lost the video on and ended up just kind of putting it on super speed and put some music to it. So I'm gonna see if maybe I can do a voiceover. I'll try and pull that video and try to do a voiceover and put up a new video for that. So the next thing that I'm gonna need is two ounces of cream cheese. So I'm just gonna put that in there like that. And then I'm going to need some green onion. So I'm just going to put that in there. I think I'm going to use probably two of them. Now, if you don't want to put your green onion in the bag, if you're afraid of the aroma of it getting on everything else, you can just leave that out. I have not actually had any issues. I usually put that in there and I've not had any issues with it. 
And the last thing that I'm going to put in there is two six ounce portions of chicken breast. And then just seal up the bag. So that's it. This one is really easy to make. And I do this one in the air fryer, uh, but you can definitely do it in the oven. This is another one that's not on my website. So the recipe will just be typed out down below and you can just copy and paste it. So that is how I do my dinner kits. So set that aside. The next one that I'm gonna put together is going to be ranch pork chops with roasted pears and green beans. This one is eight points on blue, eight points on purple, and eight points on green. So the, what I'm gonna do is put my green beans down in the bottom. Now, normally I would snip these, the ends off of these first just to save me a little time, but it looks like they are. these ones are almost all the way snipped, so I'm not gonna worry about it. And my re the recipe calls for eight ounces. This is a 12 ounce package, and since green beans are zero, I'm just gonna use all of them. All right, the next thing we're gonna need is a Bosque pear. We're also going to need a shallot. We're going to need two garlic cloves, three sprigs of thyme, and you know what, I think I'm going to put the thyme in a container. Let me use this container. Because I'm afraid that's gonna be way too fragrant. And I'm not gonna be having this one until Wednesday night. So yeah, I'm just gonna put this into a container. Okay. Now that I got half of it on my table here. And if you don't have fresh thyme, you can definitely use the, um, just use a little bit of ground thyme. And then I usually use two five ounce pork chops in here. So everything that is in each kit, I think I forgot to mention, everything in each kit is just enough for my husband and I. It's only two portions. And that's why we're able to control are eating because we only have enough for the two portions. There's not leftovers for us to go back for a second. So normally for this one, it's two five ounce pork chops, but I checked in my freezer and I'm completely out of pork chops. So time for me to go back to Sam's Club and do another haul. So I'm gonna use 10 ounces of pork tenderloin and we'll just split that. And that will go in there. And there are some things for this kit that I don't put in here like two teaspoons of chicken base, which I just use the better than bouillon. Um, I use that and I don't put that in there. I keep this in my fridge. Also a teaspoon of olive oil, a half an ounce of light butter, and one teaspoon of ranch dressing powder. So that stuff is all so small that I'm just gonna wait and do it the night that we have it. So that's gonna be it for that kit. The final kit I'm gonna be doing is bourbon glazed salmon with wild rice and squash and zucchini lime crema. So this one, I do have a cook with me out. I'll link it down below. I actually think I just did this one recently. So what I do with this one, for the salmon, I marinate this the night before. So you wanna marinate your salmon between two and 12 hours or overnight, which is usually what I do. So what I'm gonna do with this one is put the marinade in one of these bags, but I'm not gonna put the salmon in it yet. Uh, I'm gonna wait and then the night before we have this, I will pull the salmon, put it in here, and then let it marinate overnight because I don't want it sitting in the marinade for more than one night, so that's why I'm not doing putting it all together now. But I, mean, I am gonna at least get the marinade ready. The sides that I'm doing are wild rice, which I use just the 90 second microwave rice, so I'm not putting that in the kit, and then squash and zucchini lime crema, which is basically just roasted squash and zucchini with sour cream and a lime. So I'm gonna weigh out two ounces of sour cream. And then normally what I would do is just put my lime in the bag and add it that night, but because I'm using lime in my marinade, I'm gonna be cutting the lime now, so I'm just gonna add a teaspoon of lime juice to that as well. And you certainly don't have to use fresh lime. You can use the lime kind, you know, the squeezable kind that you keep in your fridge. That's fine as well. And just carefully mix that up. 
So basically what I do is I just roast the zucchini and squash in the oven and I usually season it with like salt and pepper and then you'll just add this over the top after. So that is all I'm putting in that. So that's going to be it for the vegetables. I'm just going to do those. I was worried when I did my grocery haul, you probably heard me mention that I was worried that wasn't going to be enough for the two of us, but I think it's going to be plenty because we're having salmon and salmon is pretty filling for me. And plus I'm having rice with it. So it's plenty. If I wasn't having rice, then I would probably buy another zucchini and squash. So now I'm going to mix together the marinade. And I'm going to put it on these little bag holders and if I remember I will link these down in the description box also I try to link everything I get I didn't used to link everything down below but so many I get so many questions about where I get things so I try to make it easy for you and link the direct link down below but sometimes I do forget so if I forget just ask me okay so what we're gonna put in this is two tablespoons of lime juice which I'm gonna probably have to get another lime. It's just one tablespoon of lime juice, not two. So I won't need another one. Right, the next thing I'm gonna need is some garlic. And just mince that up real good. Throw that in your bag. The next thing I need is one to two teaspoons of ginger, which usually I use fresh ginger and just grate it. But I don't have any fresh ginger, so I'm just going to use a little bit of ground ginger. And with it being ground ginger, I don't want to use one to two teaspoons. That's for fresh ginger. So I'm just going to put some in there. Just kind of eyeball it. Right, the next thing I'm going to put in is one tablespoon of brown sugar. And I'm using the Lakanto artificial sweetener. So you could use the swerve or you can use regular brown sugar and just make sure to plug it in to see if it increases the points. Actually, no, I'm sorry, it's two tablespoons. So two tablespoons of the brown sugar. Then I'm gonna need one and a half tablespoons of soy sauce. And one ounce of bourbon. If you don't like to cook with alcohol, you can definitely leave that out. So I usually just get these little Knob Creek bur bourbons and these will last for two of them. So that's it. Then just mix that all together real good. Make sure the sugar is all mixed in. And then like I said, the night before I have these, I will take my salmon and just lay it in there flat and put it in my fridge. Okay, so then I'm just gonna put that in the bag. And then I'm gonna put the salmon in there. And then like I said, the day before, I will just take the salmon out up here and put it in with the marinade and let it sit overnight. So that's it for that one. So that's it for the dinners. And you know what, I forgot about the cheese for the chicken. So with the chicken, I used 28 grams of Velveeta shreds and that just goes over the top of it after. Forgot to put that in there. But you can leave that out and save yourself a point. So I'm gonna put these away. And the last thing I have to do is my snacks, which I'm just going to be cutting up a cantaloupe this week. And then I will show you everything we ended up with and go over the points with you. All right, the last thing I'm going to do is snacks. So for snacks this week, I am just doing my pudding and PB2 and whipped cream mixture, which I've been having. It's basically just a sugar-free pudding cup with 23 grams of fat-free Cool Whip and 13 grams of PB2, and it is so good. So I won't be doing that ahead of time. And then I do popcorn at night. And then other than that, this week I'm just doing fruit. I'm not, I've been trying to stay away from like the carby things like pretzels and uh, chips and things like that until I am 100% back on track. 
So I have some melon and I also have some kiwi. So I'm just gonna cut these up and put them into two glass containers for my husband and I for the week. for this week. So let me clean this up and then I'll show you what I ended up with for the week and I'll go over the points with you. All right, everyone, here's what I have for the week. So let me start down here with the snacks. I have our cantaloupe and kiwi, one for me, one for my husband. We'll just snack on that throughout the week. Of course, that's zero points. And then I have this tray that I keep in my fridge. Well, I don't keep the PB2 in there. I have our puddings in here. These are two points. And like I said, I usually mix the pudding with 23 grams of the fat-free Cool Whip and 13 grams of the PB2. And as you can see, I now have chocolate PB2. Thank you to my good friend Jackie who <laughs> mailed this to me for my birthday. I appreciate it so much, Jackie. Jackie knew that I hadn't tried the chocolate kind. So I am anxious to try this the next time I make my chocolate chip peanut butter overnight oats. She said it's excellent in that, so I'm going to try it in that the next time I make those. So, and then we've got cottage cheese cups. These are two points each. And then I have our breakfast. So it is, this one is four points on blue and purple and five points on green. And then, of course, the berries, blueberries are zero. And I have zero points worth of the sugar-free syrup. So those look so good. I cannot wait to have those. I think I'm going to end up starting to put this sugar on all my pancake bakes because it just looks so good. And then the lunches honestly don't <laughs> don't look overly appealing. Um, they To me, they don't look, it doesn't look like a lot of food in there. I'll see what it does. With the fact that it's there's rice in there, I think it's going to be filling. Honestly, I think I would probably use more vegetables. So I think next time I might even double the vegetables. But these are pretty big containers. So I think these are like four cup containers. So these are actually pre pretty big. If I put these in my smaller containers, I'm sure it would look like it was plenty of food. So I think it's just the size of the container that's throwing me off a little bit. And these are uh, three points on blue and purple and five points on green. And I forgot to mention, to reheat these, I'm just gonna pull the blueberries and the syrup out. And then I just reheat these for up to a minute. It depends really, I don't like mine too hot, so sometimes I'll check it after 30 seconds and see you know, how it is. And then the same with the lunches. I'll just reheat those probably for 30 seconds, stir it up and see how it is. I don't wanna cook it too much because my chicken I already kinda of overcooked a little bit, so I don't wanna dry that out too much. And then I have my dinner kits for the week, my cream cheese and broccoli cream cheese and broccoli Hasselback chicken with broccoli and peppers, four points on blue and purple and eight points on green. My ranch pork chops with roasted pears and green beans, that's eight points on all programs. And then I think I forgot to tell you the points on the salmon. And I had to change the points on the salmon because if you remember I told you that I put the points for what's in the entire bag. Well, this one I had one point for blue and purple and five points for green because that is what the salmon is with the bourbon glaze. So I needed to add in for my rice. So I have a half a cup of that 90 second rice, which is three points. And then the lime crema because of the sour cream is two points. So the total in here is for the whole dinner is six points on blue and purple and 10 points on green. If you're on purple and you wanna use brown rice, then that would only be a three point dinner. So there we have it, I'm ready for the week. If you're new to meal prepping, please, please, please don't get overwhelmed by this. Don't feel like you have to do all this. 
Honestly, meal prepping can simply be cutting up your fruit. It doesn't have to be a whole full meal prep like this. Some people don't like to eat things more than one day and that's completely fine. So maybe your meal prep might be that you're prepping for the next day. You know, each night you're doing the next day. Whatever works for you. Everybody's different. I like to have the same thing over because I really enjoy these recipes that I make. So I'm just giving you ideas so that you can take these ideas and you can kind of make your own meal prep. So if you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, put any comments down below, that really does help my channel and I greatly appreciate it. If you're new, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. Make sure to click the subscribe bell and also click the notification bell because that's what notifies you anytime I upload new content. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. I'm Christy and I'm planning this healthy.